Krishnamurti, in dialogue with Dr. Alan W. Anderson. J. Krishnamurti was born in South India and educated in England. For the past 40 years, he has been speaking in the United States, Europe, India, Australia, and other parts of the world. From the outset of his life's work, he repudiated all connections with organized religions and ideologies and said that his only concern was to set men absolutely, unconditionally free. He is the author of many books, among them The Awakening of Intelligence, The Urgency of Change, Freedom from the Known, and The Flight of the Eagle. This is one of a series of dialogues between Krishnamurti and Dr. Alan W. Anderson, who is Professor of Religious Studies at San Diego State University, where he teaches Indian and Chinese scriptures and the oracular tradition. Dr. Anderson, a published poet, received his degree from Columbia University and the Union Theological Seminary. He has been honored with a distinguished teaching award from the California State Universities. Mr. Krishnamurti, last time we were speaking together, we were going into beauty. And just as we came to the end of our conversation, the question of seeing and its relation to the transformation of man, which is not dependent on knowledge or time, was something we promised ourselves we would, we would take up next time we could come together. Uh, is <coughs> so what is seeing and what is listening and what is learning? I think there are three related to each other, seeing. learning, hearing, and see. Mm -hmm. What is see? Perceiving. Do we actually see? Or do we see through a screen, darkly? <laughs> screen of prejudice, screen of our idiosyncrasies, experiences, our wishes, pleasures, fears. So, we, and our, obviously our images about that which we see and about ourselves. So we, are, we have this screen after screen between us and the object of perception. So do we ever see the thing at all? Or is it the seeing is coloured by our knowledge, botanical experience, so on, so on, so on, or our images which we have about that thing, uh, or the belief in which my mind is conditioned, the mind is conditioned, and therefore prevents the seeing? Or is the memories which I have, which I have, which mind has cultivated, prevents the seeing? So, seeing may not take place at all. Mm -hmm. And is it possible for their mind not to have these images, conclusions, beliefs, memories, prejudices, fears, and pla and without having those screens, just to look? I think this becomes very important because if I, when there is a seeing of the thing which I am talking about, when there is a seeing, you can't help but acting. Hmm. There is no question of postponement. Or succession. Succession. Or interval. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because when action is based on a belief, a conclusion, an idea, then that action is time-binding. Mm -hmm. 
and that action will inevitably bring conflict and sorrow, regrets and all the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very important to find out what it is to see, to perceive, what it is to hear. Do I ever hear? When one is married, as a wife or a husband, or a girl or a boy, do I ever hear her or him? Or I hear her or him through the image I have built about her or him, through the screen of uh, irritations, screen of annoyance, uh, domination, you know, all that, that dreadful things that come in relationship. Mm -hmm. So, do I ever hear directly what you say, without translating, without um, transforming it, without twisting it? Do I ever hear a bird cry, hmm? mm -hmm. or a child weep, or a man crying in pain? You follow, sir? Do I ever hear anything? In, in a conversation we had about a year ago, uh, I, I was uh, very struck by something you said, which I regard as, for myself personally, immensely valuable. You, you said that hearing was doing nothing to stop or interfere with seeing. Okay. Hearing is doing nothing, nothing. to stop seeing. seeing. Uh, that, 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 that is very remarkable, because in conversation, the notion of hearing is regarded as intimately associated with command. We, we will say, won't we, now hear me, hear me out, and the person thinks that they have to lean forward in the sense of do something voluntarily. Right, right. Uh, it's as though they have to screw themselves up into <laughs> some sort of agonized twist here, uh, not, not only to please the one who is insisting that they're not hearing, but to, to get up some hearing yeah, on right, their own. Right, right. Yes, yes. So, do, uh, does a human being, I O X, listen at all. And what takes place when I do listen? Listen in the sense, without any interference, without any interpretation, conclusion, like on this, you know, all that takes place. What takes, what happens when I Actually, listen. Say, so, look, we said just now, we cannot possibly understand what beauty is if we don't understand suffering, passion. Mm -hmm. You hear that statement. What does the mind do? It draws a conclusion. It has formed an idea. Mm -hmm. Verbal idea, words, here's the words, draws a conclusion and an idea, say a statement of that kind, has become an idea. <laughs> hmm? Then the man says, How am I to carry out that idea? <laughs> and that becomes a problem. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> because the idea doesn't conform to nature, yeah. and other people have other ideas, and, and they, so they want to get theirs embodied, and now we're up against the clash. Yes. So, can I listen to that, can the mind listen to that statement without any uh, forming an abstraction? Just listen. 
and either agreeing or disagreeing, just actually listen completely to that statement. If, if I'm following you, what you're saying is that were I to listen adequately, or just, let's say, listen, because it's not a question of more or less. Yeah. I'm absolutely listening, or I'm absolutely not listening. Not listening. That's yes. Right. I would not have to contrive an answer. No, because, you know, you're, you are in it. Yes. So, like the cat, the action and the seeing are one. Yes. They're one act. That's right. Th so they're one act. That's right. That's yes. right. So can them can I listen to a statement? And see the truth of the statement or the falseness of the statement. Not in comparison. Mm -hmm. But in the very statement that you are making. I don't know if I am making myself clear. Yes, you are making yourself very clear. That is, I listen to this statement. Beauty can never exist without passion. And passion comes from sorrow. Mm -hmm. I listen to that statement. I don't abstract an idea from of it, or make an idea from it. I just listen. What takes place? You may be telling the truth, or you may be making a false statement. I don't know. Because hmm? I'm not going to compare. No. You're going to see. I just listen. Mm -hmm. Which means I'm giving my total attention. Just listen to this. You see what's going on. I give my total attention to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then it doesn't matter what you say or don't say. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you, of course. Of course. Of course. What is important, my act of listening. And that act of listening has brought a miracle, brought about a miracle of complete freedom from all that your statements, whether they are true, false, are real. I am, my mind is completely attentive. What more? Without attention means no border. The moment I have a border, I begin to fight you. Agree, disagree. Moment attention has a frontier, hmm? then concepts arise. But uh, if I listen to you completely, without a single interference of thought or ideation or mentation, just listen to that, the miracle has taken place, which is. My total attention absolves me, my mind, from all the statements. I don't know if I'm... Mm, yes, you Therefore are... Therefore, my mind is extraordinarily free to act. Well, this has happened for me uh, on this, uh, this, this uh, series of, of our uh, conversations. With each one of these conversations, since uh, th this is being videotaped, uh, one begins when one is given the sign, and uh, where uh, we're told when the time has, has mm -hmm. elapsed, and one ordinarily, in terms of activity in uh, uh, this sort, uh, is 
is thinking about the production as yeah, such, of course. you see. But one of the things that I've learned is in our, uh, in our conversation, uh, I've been listening very intensely, uh, and yet I've not had to divide my mind. No, sir, that's the... uh, and, and yet this is, if I'm, if I'm responding correctly to what you have been teaching, well, I know you don't like that word, <laughs> what you've been, what you've been saying, and I understand why teaching was a wrong word here. Um, there is that very first encounter that the mind engages itself yes. in. Yes. How can I afford not to make the distinction between paying attention to the aspects of the program on the production aspect of it and <coughs> still engage our discussion. Right. Uh, but the, the, more, yeah, the more intensely the you discussion is right. engaged, the more efficiently yes, the question. <laughs> all the mechanism yeah. uh, is accomplished. Yeah. Uh, we don't believe that. Uh, in the sense that, not only to start with will we not believe it, but we won't even try it out. We, the, there's no guarantee from anybody in advance. What we're told, rather, is this. Uh, well, you'll get used to it. And yet, uh, uh, performers uh, uh, have stage fright all their lives. So clearly they don't get used to no, it. No, sir, it is. Because, uh, don't you think it is, our minds are so commercial. Unless I get a reward from it, I won't do a thing. Hmm? <laughs> and my mind lives in the marketplace. One's mind. Mm. I give you this, give me that. And there's an interval in between. <laughs> <laughs> you follow? Right. So, uh, we are so used to commercialism, both spiritually and physically, that we don't do anything without a reward, without gaining something, without a, a purpose. Mm -hmm. It all must be an exchange, not a gift, but exchange. I give you this, and you give me that. I torture myself, religiously, and God must come to me. It's all a matter of commas. Fundamentalists have a phrase uh, that comes to mind with respect to their devotional life. Uh. They, they, they say, I am claiming the promises of God. And this this phrase, in the I context know, of what you're I saying, uh, is, uh, my goodness, what, what that couldn't lead to in I the mind. I know, sir. So, you see, when one goes very deeply into this, when action is not based on an idea, a formula, a belief, then seeing is the doing. Mm -hmm. Then what is seeing? and hearing, which we went into, then the seeing is, the, is complete attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the doing is in that attention. And the difficulty is, how, people will ask, how will you maintain that attention? Yes, and they haven't even started. <laughs> yes, no, how will yes, you maintain it? Yes. Which means they are looking for a reward. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'll practice it. I will do anything to maintain that attention in order to get something in return. Mm -hmm. Attention is not a result. Attention has no cause. I mean, what has cause 
becomes a, has an effect, and the effect becomes the cause. It's a circle. But attention isn't that. Attention doesn't give you a reward. Attention, on the contrary, there is no reward or punishment. This is no frontier. I don't know. Yes, this calls up uh, an earlier conversation we had when you mentioned the word virtue, and uh, we explored yes. it in relation yes. to power. Exactly, exactly. And we're told uh, what 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 uh, is difficult for a thinking child to believe, given the way the child's brought up, uh, but uh, <laughs> he's uh, required somehow to make his way through it. That virtue is its own reward. Oh, that just yes, correct. And and of course, it's impossible to see what is sound about that yes, quite. under the the conditioned situation in which he lives. They're just an idea, sir. It's They're an, just idea. an idea. So now we tuck that back, and uh, then later, when we need to remind somebody that uh, they're asking too much of reward for something good that they did. We tell them, well, have you forgotten that virtue is its own reward? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It, it, it becomes a form of punishment. So, then, you see, seeing and hearing, mm -hmm. what we, then what is learning? Because they're all interrelated. Learning, Seeing, and hearing, hearing. Hmm? and action, action, and all that. It's yes. all in one movement. It's, they are not separate uh, chapters. <laughs> it's one chapter. Distinctions, no divisions. No, yeah. So what is learning? Is learning a process of accumulation? And is learning non-accumulative? We're putting both together. But let's look at it. Let's look at it. Yes. I learn. One learns a language, Italian, French, whatever it is, and accumulates words, and and the irregular verbs and so on, and then able to speak. That is learning a language and being able to speak. Learning how to ride a bicycle learning how to drive a car, learning how to put together a machine, how to um, electronics and so on, so they, those are all learning to acquire knowledge in action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm asking, is there any other form of learning? That we know. We are familiar with the acquisition of knowledge. Now, is there any other kind of learning? Learning which is not accumulated hmm, and acting. I don't know. Yes, uh, when we've accumulated it all, we haven't understood anything on that account. Yes. yes. And mm -hmm. I learn in order to gain a reward. Or in order to avoid punishment, I learn uh, a particular job, a particular uh, craft, in order to earn a livelihood. That is absolutely necessary. Otherwise, I'm now I'm asking: Is there any other kind of learning? That's routine. That's the cultivation of memory, and the memory, which is the result of experience and knowledge, that is stored in the brain, and that operates. Mm -hmm. When asked to do, mm, ride a bicycle, drive a car, and so on. Now, is there any other kind of learning, or only that? When one says, I have learned from my experience, It means I have learned, stored up from that experience certain memories, and those memories either prevent 
reward or punish. Mm -hmm. So, then all the, such forms of learning are mechanical. Mm -hmm. And we, and the brain, and education is trained, the education is to train the brain to function in routine, mechanically. Mm -hmm. Because in that there is great security. Mm? Mm -hmm. Then it's safe. <laughs> and so, our mind becomes mechanical. My father did this, I do this, and you follow? The whole business mm -hmm. is mechanical. Now, is there a non-mechanical brain at all? A non-utilitarian, <laughs> in that sense, yes. learning, which has neither future nor past, therefore not time-binding. I don't know if I'm making this. Don't we sometimes say, uh, I've learned from experience, when we wish to convey something that isn't well conveyed by that expression, uh, we wish to convey an insight that we don't feel can be, in a strict sense, dated, Listen, you see, sir, do we learn anything from experience? We have had, from history, history began, written history, 5,000 wars. I read somewhere, 5,000 wars. Hmm. Killing, 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 maimed. And have we learned anything? Have we learned anything from sorrow? Man has suffered. Have we learned anything from experience of the agony of uh, uncertainty and all the rest of it? So when we say we have learned, I question, you follow? It seems such a terrible thing to say, I've learned from experience. You have learned nothing except in the field of knowledge. I don't know. Yes, uh, may I say yes, sir, uh, something here that, that just passed uh, in, in recall? Uh, we were talking about sorrow before, and I, I was thinking of, uh, of a statement of St. Paul's in uh, his letter to the Romans, where there's a very unusual sequence of words uh, where he says, we rejoice in tribulations. Now, some people have thought he must have been a masochist or something in making such a statement, but uh, that certainly seems to me bizarre. Uh, we rejoice in tribulations. And then he says, because tribulation works, and in the Greek this means that there's energy mm -hmm. involved, works patience patience experience. Now, that's a very unusual order, because we usually think that if we have enough experience, we'll learn to be patient. And he completely stands that on its head. Yeah. And in a context of what you're saying, that order of his words makes eminent sense. Please, please go on. Yeah. I, I, no, no. I, 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 yes. That's, uh, that's, that's really very remarkable. You see, sir, that's why our education, our civilization, all the things about us has made our mind so mechanical, hmm? so repetitive reactions, hmm. repetitive demands, repetitive pursuits, same thing being repeated year after year thousands of years. My country and your country, I'll kill you, you kill me. You follow, sir? The whole thing is mechanical. Now, 
That means my, the mind can never be free. Thought can never, thought is never free. Thought is always old. There is no new thought. <laughs> well, no, it, uh, it's very curious in relation to uh, a movement within uh, the field of religion that calls itself, or did call itself, new thought. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was, just, I was laughing at the irony of it. Yes, I... Uh, goodness me. Uh, some, some persons, I, I imagine, would object to the... Uh, the notion that we don't learn from experience uh, in terms of the succession of wars, because wars tend to happen uh, sequentially, generation to generation, and you have to grow up. But that's not true, because wars, more than one war, will happen very often in the same generation. Yeah, listen, and there hasn't been anything learned. What are they talking learned. about? Two wars? Yes. Hasn't been anything learned at all. At all. Uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's a terrifying thing to hear someone just just come out and say, uh, nobody learns anything from experience. Uh, no, the word experience also means to go through. Yes, yes. But you never go through. That's exactly right. You always stop in the middle, uh, or you never begin. Right. It means, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly in terms of its, of its radical root, I uh, mean, so uh, to test, to, to put to test, to, uh, to, well, to put a thing to the test and behave correctly while that's going on. Ah, that's you simply true. have to yes, that, see, that, you just course, have to course, look, don't you? Of course. Yes. So that comes, so, as our civilization, our culture, our education has brought about a mind that is that's becoming more and more mechanical, mm -hmm. and therefore time binding, and therefore never sense of freedom. Freedom then becomes an idea. Mm? You play around philosophically, or you know, but it's no meaning. But a man who says, "Now I want to find out. Mm -hmm. I want to really go into this and discover if there is freedom." then he has to understand the limits of knowledge. Where knowledge ends, mm -hmm. or rather, the ending of knowledge and the beginning of something totally new. I don't know if I'm conveying it. You are. Oh, that, yes. Yes. that is, sir, I, what is learning? If it is not mechanical, then what is learning? Is there a learning at all? Learning about what? Mm -hmm. I learn uh, how to go to the moon, mm -hmm. how to put up this, that, and drive, and so on. That's, in that field, there is only learning. Mm -hmm. Is there any learning in any other field, psychologically, spiritually? You? Mm -hmm. Can I learn? Can the mind learn about what they call God? If, if in learning, in the sense that you have asked this question, no, I, I, I must rephrase that. Now stop this ifing. When, when one does what I'm about to say, when one learns about God, or going to the moon, uh, in terms of the question you've asked, he can't be doing what you are pointing to if this is something added on to the list. Sir, look yes, what of course. is so clear. Yes, yes, it is. I learn a language. Ride a bicycle, drive a car, put a machine together. That's essential. Now, I want to learn about God. Just listen to me. The God is my making. God hasn't made me me in his image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have made him in my image. Now, and I'm going to learn about him. Yes, you I'm going to talk to myself. Learn about the image which I have built. Mm -hmm. 
about Christ, Buddha, whatever it is. The image I have built. So I'm learning what? To talk about talk. Yes. Learning about the image which I have built. Sir? Therefore, is there any other kind of learning except mechanical learning? I don't know if I... Well... You, no. you understand my yes. question? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I certainly do. So, there is only learning the mechanical process of life. There is no other learning. Yes. And see what that means, sir. It means freedom. I can learn about myself. Because myself is known. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, known in the sense, I may not know it, but I can know by looking at myself, I can know myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the myself is the accumulated knowledge of the past. Mm -hmm. The me who says, I'm greedy, I'm envy, I'm, I'm successful, I'm, I'm frightened, I'm betrayed, I regret, all that is the me. Mm -hmm. Including the soul which I have invented in the me. <laughs> oh, the Brahman, the Atman, it's all me, still. I have, the me has created the image of God. And I'm going to learn about God, which is no meaning. So, if there is, when the, now I'm going to say, use the word if. If there is no other learning, what takes place? Mm -hmm. I employ, the mind is used in the acquisition of knowledge in matter. <laughs> we'll put it differently. Mm -hmm. In uh, uh, mechanical things. And when the mind is employed there, is there any other processes of learning? which means psychologically, inwardly. You. Mm -hmm. Is there? The inward is the invention of thought as opposed to the outer. I don't know if I... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I have understood the outer, I have understood the inner. Because the inner has created the outer. Yeah, the outer in the sense of the structure, the society, the religious sanctions, the, all that is invented or put together by thought. Mm -hmm. The Jesus, the Christ, the Buddha, all that. Mm -hmm. And what is there to learn? In listening to you, see in, the, yes, in... See the beauty of what yes. is coming out oh, of Oh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, goes back to your, your uh, remark about Vedanta as the yeah. end of knowledge. That's what I was told. Yes. Uh, the, the interesting thing to me about the, the Sanskrit construction is that, unless I'm mistaken, uh, it, it doesn't mean the end of it as a terminus, as a term, because that would, that would simply start a new series. It's the consummation of it which is the total end in the sense that a totally new beginning is made that at means, that very point. That means, sir, I know, the mind knows the activity of the known. That's right, yes. That's or the consummation of, of, the of known, knowledge. Yes. Of knowledge. Yes. Now, what is the state of the mind that is free from that, and yet functions in knowledge. And yet functions in it. You, you... Yes, yes. It is seeing perfectly. Uh, no, yeah. no, no, go into it, you'll see where strange things take place. Mm -hmm. What is the... Can... is this possible first? You understand? Because my... the brain and the... Whole, is functions mechanically. Mm -hmm. 
He wants security. Otherwise, it can't function. If we hadn't sec- um, security, we wouldn't be here sitting together. Mm-hmm. Because we have security, we can da- have a dialogue. Mm-hmm. The brain can only function in complete security. Whether that security it finds in a neurotic belief, mm-hmm. or in a neurotic belief, all beliefs and all mm, ideas are neurotic in that sense. Yes. So it finds it somewhere in accepting nationality as the highest form of the good. Mm-hmm. Success is the highest virtue. Mm-hmm. That's wrong. It finds belief, security there. Now, you are asking the mind, the brain, which has become mechanical, trained, century, to see the other field which is not mechanical. Is there another field? I don't. No. You follow me? Yes, I do. Yes. <coughs> yes, that's what's so utterly devastating. <laughs> Is there... Wait, mm. wait. Is I there know. another field? Now, unless I, the brain and the mind understands the whole field, uh, under, not the, understands the movement of knowledge, mm. it is a movement. It's a movement, yes. It's not just static. You are adding, taking away, mm-hmm. putting, to, and so on. Unless it understands all that, it cannot possibly ask that other question. Exactly. Exactly. And when it does ask that question, what takes place? It this, so this is real meditation, you know? This is, yes, yes. Which we'll go into another time. So. You see, that's what it means. I am all... one is always listening with knowledge, seeing with knowledge. Hmm? This is the seeing through a glass darkly. Darkly. Mm -hmm. Now, can... is there a listening out of silence? And that is attention. You? Mm-hmm. And that is not time binding. Because in that silence I don't want anything. It isn't I'm going to learn about myself. It isn't I'm going to be punished, rewarded. In that absolute silence I listen. The wonder of the whole thing is that that it isn't uh, uh, it isn't something that is done. No, this meditation uh, in 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 succession. Mm. So when we talk <laughs> about meditation, we'll have to go very deep yes. into that because yes. they have destroyed that word. These shoddy little men coming from India or anywhere, they have destroyed that thing. I heard I heard the other day about someone who was. Uh, Learning transcendental meditation. Oh, you learning for instance. Of course, and uh, they they had to do it at three o'clock in the afternoon. Pay thirty-five dollars or a hundred dollars to learn that. Yeah, and, and it's so sacrilegious. <laughs> but if that is three o'clock in the afternoon was judgment day, it it, it was. <laughs> if you didn't, yeah, if you didn't do it on according to your schedule then the world has obviously come to an end. But ostensibly you're doing it to get free of that. <laughs> Do go ahead. Do go ahead. So you see, sir, that what takes place. We began this morning about beauty. Mm-hmm. Yes. Then passion, then suffering, then action. Mm-hmm. Action based on idea is inaction. <laughs> it sounds monstrous, but there it is. And from that we said, what is seeing and what is hearing? The seeing and the listening has become mechanical. 
We never see anything new. Even the flower is never new, <laughs> which has blossomed overnight. We say yes, that the rose, I've been expecting it, it has come out now. How beautiful! Hmm? It's always from the known to the known. Hmm. A movement in time and therefore time binding, and therefore never free. And yet we are talking about freedom, you know, philosophy, uh, and the lectures on freedom, and so on, so on, so on. And the communist call it a bourgeois thing, which it is, in that sense, when you limit it to knowledge, it is foolish to talk about freedom. But there is a freedom when you understand the whole mo the movement of knowledge. So you can you observe out of silence and observe and act in the field of knowledge. So both together in harmony. You mm -hmm. Seeing then is not scheduled. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, of not. course. Of course. What a Yes, sir. Uh, I was just thinking about the, uh, I suppose you'd say, a classical definition of, of freedom in terms of the career of knowledge uh, would be that uh, it is a property of action, a property or quality of action for general uses, either word would do, property or quality. And it occurred to me, in the context of, of what we've been saying, what, what a horror that one could read that statement and, and not let it disclose itself to you. Quite, quite just if it disclosed itself to you, you would, you'd be up against it. You'd, you'd just, you'd have to be serious. Okay. If you were a philosophy student and you read that, and that thing began to, to, operate. to operate in you, you'd say, uh, uh, I've got to get this settled before I go on. Maybe I'll never graduate. That's not important. That's not important. Quite right. right, yes. And I was thinking, <coughs> in the West as well as in the East, you have to go to... <coughs> the factory or the office every day of your life. Get up at nine o'clock, eight o'clock, six o'clock, drive, walk, hmm? work, work, work. <coughs> For fifty years, routine, mm -hmm. and get kicked about, insulted, worship success, again repetition. Hmm? And then occasionally talk about God if it is convenient, and so on, so on. That is a monstrous life. <coughs> and that's what we are educating our children for. Th that's the real living death. Mm. And yes. nobody says, yes. for God's sake, let's look at all this and new. Let's wipe our eyes clear of the past and look what we are doing. Give attention, care about what we are doing. Now, we, we, we have this question instead. What shall we do about it? Mm. Yes, that's the question. And then that becomes the next thing done that's added Which is to the, the link. continuity of the past in a different form. And the chain is yes. endlessly mm. linked, 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 yes. linked, linked, linked. Cause becoming the effect and the effect becoming the cause. So it's a very <coughs> serious thing when we talk about all this, because one has life becomes dreadfully serious, and it's only this serious person that lives, not these people who seek entertainment, religious or the otherwise. I had a very interesting occasion to to understand what you're saying uh, in. Uh in, in class uh, yesterday, 
I was trying to, to uh, assist the students to see that uh, the classical <coughs> understanding of the four <coughs> causes in operation is uh, that they are non-temporally related. Yes, sir. And I, I said when the potter puts his hand to the clay, the, the hand touching the clay is not responded to by the clay after the hand has touched it. And <coughs> one person uh, who was visiting the class, uh, this, this person was uh, uh, a well-educated person. Uh, and uh, a professor. And this struck them as, as maybe not so. That, and I could, I could tell by the expression in the face that there was as little anguish here. So I said, uh, well, my radar says that there's some difficulty going on. What, uh, what's the matter? Well, it seems like there's a time interval. So I asked them to pick something up that was on the desk. And I said, well, now touch it with your finger and, and, and tell me uh, at the moment of the touching with the finger whether the thing reacts to the finger after it's touched. Touch. Now, do it. Well, even to ask somebody to apply a practical test like that with respect to a datum of knowledge, like the four causes are nya nya nya, uh, is, uh, is to interrupt the process of education as we've known it. Quite. Because you teach a student about the four causes and he thinks about them. He never goes out and looks at a thing or does anything about it. And, and so we, we spent about, uh, well, we were picking the stuff up in class and we were doing this until finally uh, it seemed like a revelation that uh, uh, the, what has been said in the classical teaching of it, which of course in modern society is rejected, uh, happens to be the case. That, and I said, I, this, this has to be seen seen watch right, right, right. this this is what you mean yes sir see of course of course of course <sighs> but we're back to that step there why was that person and so many other students following suit anguished at the point where the practical issue arose there was, there was a, there was a feeling, I suppose, that they were on the cliff. Right. That, right. That, and naturally, alertness was required. But alertness registers that we're on a cliff. Quite. So therefore, the best thing to do is turn around turn and around. run back. <laughs> yes, yes. So I think, you see, we are so caught up in words. Mm -hmm. To us, the word is not the thing. You know? mm. The description is not, not the described. described. To us, the description is all that matters. Because we are slave to words. And to ritual. Ritual and all the rest. Of yes. It. So, when you say, look, the thing matters more than the word, and then they say, how am I to get rid of the word? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How am I to communicate if I have no word? You see how they've gone off? They're not concerned with the thing, but with the word. <laughs> yes. And the, the door is not the word. Mm -hmm. So, when we are caught up in words, the word door becomes extraordinarily important. And not the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't really need to come to terms with the door, I, I say to myself, because I have the word. <laughs> exactly. I have it all. <laughs> so, that's what I... You see, education has done this. 
a great part of this education is the acceptance of words as an abstraction from the fact, from the what is. All, all philosophies are based on that. Mm. Theorize, theorize, theorize endlessly how one should live, and the philosopher himself doesn't live. You know, you know, this yes, is, I know, you I know, especially, especially some philosophies that have seemed to me uh, quite bizarre in this respect. Uh, I've, I've asked my colleagues from time to time, well, if you, if you believe that stuff, right. why don't you do it? Yeah. And they look at me as though I'm out of my mind, as, as though uh, nobody would really seriously ask that question. Right, right. But if you can't ask that question, well, what question's worth asking? Right, right. Yes. Yes. <coughs> the, and I was thinking about that marvelous story uh, you, you, you uh, told uh, in our previous conversation about the monkey uh, while you were speaking about this. Uh, when she shook hands with you, nobody had told her how to shake hands. No, he stretched out. Yes. And I took it. <laughs> wasn't something that she was taught how to do through a verbal communication. It was the appropriate thing at the time, at the time. Uh, without anyone measuring its appropriateness. Quite. quite. <laughs> isn't that, isn't, quite. That, is, isn't that something? Yes, I... I, I can't tell you how, how uh, grateful I am to have uh, been able to to share this with you. Uh, I I have uh, I've seen in respect to my own activity as a teacher, where I must perform therapy uh, even on my language, okay, okay. Uh, so that I don't give the student an occasion for thinking that I am simply adding to this More. endless chain, <laughs> link oh. after link after link. Quite. Uh, there, there are two therapies here, then. There's the therapy that re relates to, to words, and uh, that flows out naturally. It's not a contrivance. No. It flows out naturally, if I've understood you yes. correctly, from the therapy within. Now, this relates directly, as you were saying uh, earlier, to meditation. Uh, are we ready, do you think? Yeah, I think that's, that's too complicated. We must go. I, I don't mean right now, uh, but, but uh, may, maybe in one of our next conversations, oh yes, oh yes. We, we must we could discuss several things we, yet. Sir. Yes, yet. Before what is we, love, what is death, exactly. what is meditation, what is the whole movement of living. Oh, we've got a great deal to Oh, I do look forward very much <laughs> to that. Splendid. Right.